Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. And good afternoon, Inspired listeners, wherever you may be in the world today. Thank you for being with us here on Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Boy, do we have an awesome show ahead of us today. Actually, the first of its kind in terms of who we have with us as our guest. And another first, I'm actually looking right at him. How exciting is this? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) How exciting is that? Usually everyone's calling in from all over the country and the world. And so today I have the pleasure of being right here with him live from the office of Love First, where life transformations happen in Encino, California. I'm Kim Falcon, founder of Love First, and you can find me at lovefirst.info. If there's anything I can do to help support you in the way of readings, healings, hypnotherapy, or on your path of spiritual development, I would be honored to work with you. Please also make sure to check my site. I do have some upcoming workshops and events, and I will be hosting an angel communication class in May. And so if you have ever wanted to connect with your angels, learn how to hear them and communicate with them, with them. This is your class. So make sure to check the posting and the details of the class this week as I will be posting that online. And with me today and every Wednesday, someone who always manages to make me smile, my co-host and partner in crime who is loved by many, the intuitive prospector Mark Lanehart in Seattle, Washington. Mark, how are you today? Good afternoon, Kim. Hello, inspired listeners. I am very excited for today's show Me because too. it's it's sports oriented, right? We don't ever have a lot of uh, you know uh, guests that are in the sports world or have been in the sports world, so I'm very excited uh, for today's guest. But I'm also uh, you know excited for today because today is Wednesday, February 10th, and it's a very special day. Um, and if I could, real quick, Kim, I just want to give an inspired listener shout out to my older brother Todd who would have been 50, the big 5-0 today. So I uh, just wanted to say happy birthday to my brother. Uh, I look forward to your many signs from spirit that you always give me, and I know that you're enjoying what we call Summerland or others would call heaven. Uh, but just wanted to give him a shout-out because he would have been 50 today. And it's just it's amazing how time flies. Oh, uh, wonderful, Mark. Yeah, and like Kim said, I am Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector, and I would love to help you discover your own spiritual gold. Uh, and you can do that by visiting my website at marklanehart.com or just internet search the Intuitive Prospector uh, in Seattle, Washington. Uh, I do as well, Kim, have a workshop coming up uh, uh, two weeks from now. Uh, it's going to be a fun workshop called Spiritual Borders, and we're going to be doing everything from spiritual healing, mediumship, clairvoyance. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you are interested in your in the Seattle area or uh, Canada, uh, visit my site uh, for more details. And that's Spiritual Borders uh, with Mark Lanehart. Um, as far as social media, if you want to engage with the show right now, head on over to our Inspired, List, uh, Inspired Living Radio Facebook site. You can also engage with the show at Twitter, Instagram, and Google Plus Communities. And if you post a question right now on the Inspired Living page radio, we'll bring it live to air if we can, if we have time. And if you are following us on Twitter, that's Inspired For Us. That's the number for us. If you missed the live show, head on over to catch any encore shows of Inspired Living with Mark and Kim over on Ohm Times Radio Archives, SoundCloud, Podbean, YouTube, or MarkLaneHart.com. 
And Kim, we're in our second week of February already. The time is flying by, and I just want to get to our positive affirmation for the month of February. And for our inspired listeners out there, we just try to give a a positive affirmation every week for uh, four weeks. And if you say it every day, you can really start to see your life change in amazing ways. And February's inspired living positive affirmation is all that I need comes to me at the right time and place in this life. All that I need comes to me at the right time and place in this life. And that is our inspired living positive affirmation for the month of February. Love it. And isn't that the truth? It's just amazing how the universe conspires with us. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that, Mark. It's also Valentine's Day week too, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of love to everyone out there. Lots of love from Love First. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think we're ready to bring our guest on, Mark. What do you think? I say let's do it. So without further delay, our guest today, Brian Fear the Beard Wilson, professional baseball player, psychic healer extraordinaire, and just an all-around beautiful soul has graced us with his presence today. Brian is not your ordinary relief pitcher. No, he is not. His tattooed, mohawk-rocking original exterior is just as unique as his pitching ability. He is definitely one of a kind. I'm looking right at him now. He is one of a kind. His fastball can reach up to 100 miles per hour. Scary. Everything about him is extreme. His workout regimen, his personality, his performance on the field are unlike any other pitcher in the league. He is known amongst his peers to have one of the deadliest combinations in baseball, a triple digit fastball and a hit it if you can mentality. And he became one of the Giants top relief pitchers and top closers. In fact, in 2010, his performance brought the Giants to their first World Series title since 1954. Wow, how exciting is that? After a series of injuries, so Brian became a free agent in 2012. And in 2013, he spent some time with the LA Dodgers. And he became a free agent when they fell short of the World Series. So we're going to spend some time talking about how athletes learn to work through some of these extreme pressures that they can oftentimes face. Uh, We all have pressures, and it'd be interesting to hear how athletes work through those times. But most importantly, Brian has developed a keen sense for real estate, even appearing on Bravo's Million Dollar Listing. I love that show. Today, he continues to work out not only physically, but what also makes him unique, and this is my addition here, is his undying commitment to strengthening his emotional, mental, and spiritual layers of his being, and I've been honored to witness this commitment. He remains a top free agent with an eye towards returning to Major League Baseball in 2016, and I'm going to add he is going to be returning stronger and better than he's ever been. Brian, welcome to Inspired Living. So good to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, what such kind words, Kim. Thank you. I feel super <laughs> honored right now. I've never, never heard someone speak about me like that before. Oh, boy. Well, we're honored to have such you. That's a great right? intro. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yes. Well, you know, this is our first time having a professional athlete on our show. So we're really excited about that. And the one thing that I think is kind of cool is that, you know, people, you don't have to be on Oprah's Super Soul Sunday to be spiritual, you know, and that's what I love about this. In fact, I posted a video of you, Brian, when you um, were with the Giants and you, your, your final pitch was the one that won the World Series. And I posted that on social media as we were leading up to the show today. And the thing that makes me smile the most is I don't think anyone was watching that saying to themselves, you know, I bet that guy in the field meditates or I bet he's really (laughs) psychic, right? I know. I just have the feeling that he's a healer. He knows how to heal. Yeah, probably, uh, probably the last thing on people's minds is thinking that I might be a psychic healer or or energy healer. Um, (laughs) But it's funny you mentioned that because as a sports athlete, we are sort of aware of our abilities and that comes through focus and drive. So you meet a lot of athletes and they say, and they tell you, well, I knew what I was going to be when I was five. And that's just being aware of your intuition and your guidance. And a lot of the times we just kind of label the, 
these uh, these terms differently in the sports world as to not, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to offend anyone or say anything wrong, but I don't know if athletes label things to not appear. Certainly, I'm not sure, but I personally, I, I love the fact that I'm spiritual and I can meditate, and, and it's, it's something that grounds me and it makes me a better human being, and I'm sure the listeners on your radio show can, can vouch for that for sure. I love that. And you just you just never know. That's just a testament. You never know where somebody is on their path. Mm-hmm. Now, um, so Brian, so, well, I mean, at the ripe old age of 33, I mean, you sure have quite a list of accomplishments. I mean, take us back a little bit in time. How did you get into baseball? I got into baseball through wiffle ball, which is, I got to oh. say, every kid's favorite sport growing up. It's something you can just, you don't have to stretch for it. You don't have to, you don't have to be good at it. It's just throwing a, a little wiffle ball and hitting it with that long yellow bat. And everybody wanted to pitch and everybody wanted to hit. It was just something that was extremely fun and something I did every day. So I learned a lot of the mechanics through just playing wiffle ball in the backyard. I love that. When did you play your first game of wiffle ball? How old were you? Um, I want to say, like, as soon as I was walking, I was holding the bat. And <laughs> I don't know what age that was, but I'd like to say I was walking at three weeks old, but I obviously wasn't. So uh, whenever I started walking is when I started uh, grabbing for the wiffle ball. And it's just uh, one of the first things that I grabbed out of all the uh, sports modalities, you know, whether in a basketball or a football, the baseball is the easiest to hold. And I think that's something that, for my generation, was a sport that everybody played because you could just grab it and throw it whenever you wanted to. Football was a little too big for my hands. The basketball was the basketball hoop was too high to shoot. And baseball some people develop at an early age. I love that. It was already within you. And just hold that thought. We'll be right back in two minutes. Stay with us with our guest, Brian Wilson. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. I'm Maggie Chula. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. Join us every week here on Om Times Radio for Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L O V E F I R S T.info for more information. The number one reason girls drop out of school in Sub Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Uh, 
And welcome back, Inspired listeners, to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim and our special guest, Brian Fear the Beard Wilson. Brian, thank you for being with us today. So before we went to break, you were talking about um, how you got into baseball. Did you, it, I mean, it sounded like you, that was already kind of within you. Did, did you always have your eye on being in the major leagues? I did. Um, you did. It was a dream of mine. Uh, it's the the top. Um, it's the top class of, of your sport, and it's something that I've always inspired to do because it's a job of just being a kid. Like I get to play a sport for the rest of my life as long as I focus and I'm grateful for the things that I've been given, and I just keep my intentions pure. I love that. But now, for those of us who may not know, explain explain for probably mo- more the women than the men, but <laughs> explain what a relief pitcher and a closer does. What it, what do you do in that role? So, first you got to have a starter. A starter is a pitcher who starts the game. The game is nine innings long. If a starting pitcher cannot go all nine innings, you'll bring in what you call a relief pitcher. And he'll come in maybe during the middle of an inning, maybe at the start of an inning, depends on the flow of the game, and he'll go one inning at a time. Now, in today's modern game, you've got the influx of specialists. So you'll have a left-handed pitcher who throws to left-handed hitters. You'll have a right-handed guy that throws to one guy because he has really good numbers against him. And then at the end of the game is a closer, someone who pitches the ninth inning, someone who can come in every single game and you play 162 games. It's not realistic to pitch 162 games, but you have to be ready. And you get the last three outs, and basically your job is to secure the victory for the starting pitcher in the team. That's slightly more intense than what I just described, but that's, uh, that's a closer's role. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that feels really intense. What's uh, like when so much is is resting on you? I mean, you have your teammates watching, you got the fans in the stadium, you're live on TV for the world to see. I mean, walk us through what happens at the very moment you're called in, and it's kind of a do or die situation. What are you experiencing physically? mentally, emotionally? I mean, and what do you do? Do you, do you call in your angels? I mean, how, how does that all work? What are you feeling at that time? Well, there's two various, there's two various methods to that one pre aware of meditation and the angelic realm and manifestations and intentions along with positive thinking before being aware of that, you come into that situation, the phone rings, and immediately your heart starts racing, slight panic sets in, and then you kind of think of all the various ways that you're not going to do well. Now, people out there can say, oh, well, I would only think positively. Well, until you're into that situation, you've never been in that situation. You don't know how to talk yourself out of it. You go right. into a downward spiral, and oh. you think of all the various ways that you're not going to do well. And then the adrenaline gets so high that your brain kind of just shuts off and you go through just your normal body routine. And then you feel the crowd, you feel the energy of the crowd, whether you're on the road or at home, it's two different feelings at home. It's like an uplifting, like everyone's got my back on the road. It's, Oh my gosh, let me just run to the mound real quickly because I feel like everyone is wanting me to fail. Um, so then you get out of the mound and then after you throw a first couple of pitches, you realize well, maybe this isn't as intense as I thought it was. So over a period of time, you start learning situations are only difficult because you make them difficult. And if you go out there and you learn how to control your emotions and you learn how to think positively and have pure intentions of nothing but greatness, then you will achieve that. So there's two various things. So now when I pitch... I just remember when I was six, I'm having the time of my life. There's no loser here because let's say, let's say you do go out and you, and and you lose the game. You're not a loser. Like you just didn't do well in that game. Like for instance, in 2010, there were several games that I didn't win, but it was the realization that it wasn't that specific game. It was a culmination of the season because we ended up winning the world series and I didn't really care after I won the world series. 
that I lost the game in April or June or July because none of that mattered. And it, it goes true with life, too. So, Brian, let's let's set the stage for our listening audience real quick. We're talking the World Series 2010. You're going against the Rangers, bottom of the ninth inning, and Brian Fear the Beard Wilson is called out to be the relief closer. Take us through that moment of what was exactly the fear that you talked about. And it's interesting because we're the only species on Earth that creates our own fear, right? And so did right. you actually have those thoughts? And as you walked out, were you thinking I'm going to be – did you say I'm going to be a loser or did you say I'm going to be a champion? Just kind of paint that picture for our listening audience of what it's like to be at the pivotal moment of one of the top levels of professional sports in the World Series. Well. That and it started basically the entire year, but more focused on that specific day. It was game five, mm-hmm. and I went running for an hour, and every second, every step I took was envisioning myself on the mound later that night, throwing the final pitch, having it be a strikeout, and having what you call a dog pile where the whole team comes on and celebrates. I envisioned that the entire day. Mm-hmm. The flow of the game started coming, and it started looking like maybe we weren't going to win, and then magically... Edgar Renteria hits a home run and puts us up by two runs or a run actually at that point. And then Winsicum was throwing, was an ace pitcher. It looked like he was going to go all nine. So in, in my mind, I kept thinking, this is, this is what I've been dreaming of. There's no time to be fearful. And it was funny because it's the biggest moment of my life up to that point that fear didn't ever set in. I just felt good the entire game. I had these, butterfly feelings, a sense of warmth, a sense of knowing. I felt secure. I felt surrounded and supported. And then when I was called upon to go out there, it was like I was floating. I felt extremely weightless. I knew what was going to happen. And it wasn't just knowing. I absolutely 100% knew without a shadow of a doubt the outcome was going to be greatness and it was going to be exactly what I envisioned. And it was just that. And it was so surreal and dreamlike that it's nice to go back to that moment because I was so weightless and I was just in another world that I sometimes forget what that feeling's like. That's amazing. And just the, you know, just that, that emotion and knowing that you were going to, to win and have that visualization. And we do that in sports. Um, but it, it's safe to say that we can do that in all aspects of our life, couldn't we? Oh, 100%. Um, it doesn't just have to be sports. Sports is a lot easier to do because you have goals and you're put into a situation where you may have focus, but mm-hmm. you can transfer that over into life. It just has to do with how much gratitude you feel for the situation. Yeah, and that's that's a great great way to say that gratitude for today because that's all today is all you ever really have and then just the mental aspect of visualizing what you want for your life whether it's in sports whether it's in your career and actually going after uh what you want i'm just curious brian at that time did, was there anything um when you were standing out on the mound that stood out to you you know they, they always talk about when joe montana won the super bowl he looked over and he was in the huddle with the guys and he said hey there's john candy standing over at the sidelines watching the super bowl <clears throat> Was there anything that stood out, you know, in the crowd, or anything that you just remember to this day that was very unique to the uh, the moment that you were in? Uh, well, I don't have uh, like a celebrity like John Candy in, in the stands. It's <laughs> kind of funny. Like, I wonder what his teammates are thinking. Like, hey, can you get your mind in the game? But you're not going to question him because if he's in the biggest moment of his life and he's noticing John Candy, <laughs> all is good. He's got this. My my yeah, thing exactly. Was, it, it was uh, it was. I was about to throw the final pitch and it was the final pitch because it was a count of three balls, two strikes. There was two outs and I just knew it was the final pitch. Mm -hmm. So I looked into the dugout and I could just see everybody. I could see their feelings. Like they're, they're almost, it was was like everyone was frozen still. And I was just watching a silent movie at that point. I couldn't hear anything. The only thought that I could feel was, Oh my goodness. I'm literally about to throw the final pitch of the World Series, something I've been dreaming of since I was five. This is like a 20-year dream of mine, and it's finally coming true. And the thought of mine was, I wonder how the guys on the bench feel right now watching this, or the guys in the field, because they're about to dogpile, and we're about to act like children. 
And that's the <laughs> unique moment that I remember. It was just making eye contact with guys on the bench and just looking at them and like, I can't, like I can like, believe this, but I also can't believe this is happening right now. You could, you could literally read their thoughts. It was a very palpable situation at that time. You guys were communicating almost telepathically. Wouldn't it, would that be fair to say? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent that was happening. That's amazing. Yeah. And just the mental approach to it and just the visualization. I, I love that. I, I was, uh, I had read the uh, book by Michael Jordan, you know, the great basketball player. And he talked about his first practice with Phil Jackson, the Zen master, uh, when he came in, when they hired him, uh, in Chicago and, and, First practice, they're sitting on the sideline. He's sitting next to Scottie Pippen, and and Phil says, "Okay, I'm going to give you one of the hardest practices you've ever had." And for the entire practice, they sat on the sidelines and they meditated. And Jordan, uh, in his book, had talked that he leaned over to Pippen and said, "This guy isn't going to last a week." And you know, you, you jump to, <laughs> to you jump to today, and you, you're talking about one of the greatest coaches, one of the greatest athletes to play the game of basketball. And just the mental approach to the biggest game of your life, and I didn't realize it was a full count, uh, you know. So add that li- that that little more pressure to you know the final pitch of the World Series. That's just amazing. And, and you know, congratulations on you know becoming a world champion and being able to visualize and see what you wanted and the focus that you talked about. It's just it's the power of the mind, and it really is at the end of the day, mind over matter. And for our listening audience, that's just a good reminder that you know it all starts with your thoughts. And I always tell people things are born twice, once in our mind and then into our reality. And here we're talking with a a professional sports athlete that talked just about that from when he was six years old to visualizing the dog pile, uh, throwing the pitch, and then seeing it become reality. Very, very powerful. So, Brian, we're going to be heading into our second break here. When we come back, let's continue to talk about this because I want to—I know that you had some injuries that you had to overcome in your career and in the power of the mind to get through injuries and, and, and you know, continue on with the game of baseball. So we'll be back in two minutes. You're listening to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Home Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. The future of Internet Radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, inspired the inspired and the inspiration. inspiration. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us? the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. Live with me. 
medium Lisa Phoenix, mediumship messages and musings, explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your hosts on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. And welcome back to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times Radio. Uh, today is a big day for Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. We have two firsts. We have our first guest who is a professional athlete, baseball player, played in the Major League Baseball and also is a world champion, won the World Series. Uh, we are also uh, proud to announce we have our sponsorship uh, for Inspired Living and one of our sponsors that have come aboard uh, to enjoy this journey with us of getting you on the path to being inspired. And the second section of the show is Inspired for Inspired Living is the Happiness Road Tour. And the Happiness Road Tour is a movement that is dedicated to spreading the happiness across every major city in the U.S. Its first stops in New York City with an evening of inspiration, entertainment, and meaningful connection that will help spread happiness. So choose happy, and if you want more information, please visit thehappinessroadtour.com to join today, and we look forward to uh, having them be a sponsor with us moving forward. How great is that? And who doesn't want to be happy? That's the one thing in life everybody that I've ever met has wanted to be. So, um, Thank you for joining us, uh, as Mark said, on this journey, the Happiness Road Tour, and um, be sure to visit their site. Mark, thank you so much. You bet. My pleasure. So before we um, went to break, Brian, we were talking about the excitement and the emotion and these intense emotions that come into play when you're, you know, at the, you, you win the World Series. My goodness, it doesn't get any better than that. And the interesting thing is, you know, when we talk about manifesting, no matter what it may be that we're trying to bring into our experience, they say that you are supposed to embody that level of emotion. So, I mean, really feel it as though it's happening right in front of you already in existence to that level of intensity of, of what you felt that that day. I think if you if we could master that, right? I think uh I think we'd have the world at our fingertips. Well, you're absolutely right. One of the easiest emotions to embody is actually anger. And there's a reason why things can cascade in a downward spiral for people is because it's so easy to just say, oh, of course this is happening to me. Of course I'm getting a flat tire, as opposed to being in that situation and just looking past it and saying, well, better times to come. I can feel happy about what's going on right now. Someone's going to fix my tire right now, or I'm going to fix it. And if you can continue to feel more gracious for the things that are around you instead of feeling like the victim, then you'll be a master creator instead of the affected. Yes, that's right. And actually, um, Brian, you and I have spent quite a bit of time talking about staying in a place of gratitude. And why don't we inspire that with the community today? I'm going to start by saying what I'm really grateful for today. I'm really grateful for the beautiful weather and having and having you with us today. I'm really grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Brian we, and Mark, what are you guys grateful right now? Yeah, let's do, let's do a round Mark. robin of gratitude. Let's do round robin, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go, go ahead, next Mark. here. Yeah, I'm. I'm always. I always wake up with a day of gratitude for today, hope for tomorrow, and respect for yesterday. And I'm. I'm just grat- My gratitude for today is um, being able to say happy birthday to my brother that's in spirit. Uh, to be able to talk with Brian, who you know, for our inspired listening audience, uh, I saw Brian fear the beard Wilson on Sports Center a couple years ago, and to say that I'd be talking to him on the radio, um, doing an interview with him, you know. Th- 
five years later is just amazing. So the synchronicities and the coincidences of how things work, uh, I'm just thankful and, and gratitude that Spirit is, is working with us on our, our road of life here. Oh, that was beautiful. I am grateful for the sun beating down on me right now, feeding me energy. I'm grateful for the gift of sight that allows me to see all the beautiful things that have been created by God. I'm grateful for the two feet that I have right now that I'm able to walk on earth and be grounded and still stay positive. I'm thankful for you guys for having me on the show. I'm thankful for the listeners. I'm also thankful specifically for Kim for helping me unleash more psychic abilities. Uh, My third eye is open now and the things that are happening are just incredible. So I'm very thankful to be unlocking the kingdom of heaven here while I'm on earth. That is beautiful. How nice is that? Let's talk a little bit about that, Brian, since we're, uh, you know, you mentioned that. that uh, that's been a profound thing for me to witness, I'll say, um, myself here in this experience and seeing your abilities kind of unfold in the way, well, actually in the way that they have, but it's, it as you describe it, I mean, you've been, you've been this way for a while. You just didn't understand it as that. Is that, is that correct? Right. Just uh, the way I was raised or the people I was surrounded by, we didn't have a knowledge. I wasn't uh, given any information about psychic development or intuition or any of the the clairs. So it's just something that I thought, well, if I really want something badly, I can get it. Or these feelings in my stomach, I'm usually right about someone and I can tell what type of energy they are based on just being lucky, I guess. And it wasn't until I was aware of this, the right terminology for it that I actually thought, wow, I've been living this way my whole life without being fully aware of it. But like you said earlier, Mark, it's the right time and right place. So um, I'm not sure I would have been handling it correctly at a younger age, but now I'm ready for it. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd like to just attest a testament to that, um, Brian. You've, I mean, you've done very well with some uh, exercises that we've done with psychometry, which, you know, for our listening audience is, um, you know, one, one avenue of picking up uh, psychic information where you hold an, an object that belonged to someone and you pick up the energy around that. And um, Brian did a pretty amazing reading on a watch that he had held. And actually not everybody has that, you know, we all have our abilities um, in different areas and maybe psychometry isn't for some, you know, some psychics don't pick up information that way. But but Brian did a, a very uh accurate read on that and you also did some amazing readings on um pictures of people that we were looking at of which i was able to confirm the level of accuracy there as well and i think you were even surprised yourself with you you know what what it was that you were able to pick up but talk to us a little bit about about that for you brian because you know, you would share that, well, there are things that came to you, but you were, maybe you didn't want to say them at first, or you weren't sure, or it's just, you know, you didn't know. And then, and then come to find out you're right. Yeah. There's a lot of things that go on. There's the analytical side of one's thoughts and then the thoughts that are coming that are guiding you towards not the correct answer, but more accurate information on what you're holding or looking at. And you're trying to decipher between what the guides are telling you and what you're trying to tell yourself. And um, once you calm your mind down, it's a feeling. My feeling is I can feel the energy build from my stomach onwards. And the more accurate I become, the more in tune of knowing full well that everything I'm about to say is accurate. It's when you start doubting yourself that you can feel the energy dissipate. So I'll become extremely warm. I might even start sweating. And when the energy dissipates through um, a long period of time of focusing or the negative thoughts come in, uh, the energy goes, goes away and then you're just left with your own thoughts. But I've mm-hmm. always been extremely visual. I just didn't know where these thoughts were coming from. But 
everybody has these abilities. Like you can walk into a room and you can kind of, you can, you can gauge the feeling of the room. You know, when someone's looking at you because you can feel their energy. So it's all around us. We just don't really pay attention to what that is. It's absolutely a psychic ability and everybody can attest to that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then once you start to, to um, realize that the um, information that you're getting and giving is accurate, how does that feel? It, it feels like a really cool accomplishment, but more, more than that, it feels like you're being given this gift that you may not think that you've earned, but you feel so much like gratitude for it. You're not over jealous or, or over um you're not over over happy you're not there's not it's just a feeling of just like really super grateful that i'm amazing myself right now <laughs> and you're just you're just like and, and that doesn't happen often we all we all uh, when's the last time you amazed yourself i feel like sometimes you take things for granted and like amazing yourself is one of the greatest gifts you could ever give and receive Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we've also spent a lot, a lot of time talking about energy, too, and um, doing some energy healing work, of which we've also um, recognized your um, intuitive healing abilities. Talk to the audience about what you did the other night for your friend's animal, and you've never had one energy healing class. We've just kind of been talking about energy. So... I thought, and I've learned a lot through intention of thoughts that it works in waves and waves are a lot faster than linear. So it'll get somewhere in the world instantaneously if you think of healing thoughts. So I just sat down, meditated for a couple of minutes, got into my space, worked my energy field, brought it into a small ball, and then envisioned the animal that just had back surgery that wasn't able to use his legs. And I pictured this dog, his name's William, and I pictured him on the ground laying on his side, and I could picture my hands hovering over his scar and just sending a warmth of good energy because I know this works in person, so if it works in person, it must absolutely work in space and time, which they're both the same. And then I just pictured the dog being calm and gentle, and wouldn't you know it, two days later, the dog's out of the hospital walking, so I didn't think it was directly affected by me but I definitely knew something was happening that is amazing and so with that stay with us we'll be back in two minutes your conscious lifestyle on steroids Om Times Radio IOM FM have you bought into the idea that you have to work hard for your money that business is hard I will share some dynamic access consciousness tools to get you out of your own way so you can create a business that actually succeeds. Join me, Simone Millicis, on the Joy of Business at 4 p.m. Mondays Eastern. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, the inspired, inspired and the inspiration. inspiration. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Om Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Om Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know. I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times.
And welcome back, inspired listeners, to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Our guest today, professional baseball player, psychic healer extraordinaire, Brian Wilson. Brian, thank you so much for being with us today. I love that latter title, psychic healer. <laughs> Man, I'm going to use that. <laughs> Well, I mean, Brian, honestly, like I think I think you might be really blowing some of the listeners away today. In fact, you did with me when you told me this story the other day that you um, just intuitively knew what to do when you sent this um, dog uh, energy healing and you visualize, you use visualization to see the dog lying there and your hands placed over him where he had this operation. And that is just... Um, um, you know, when things like that happen, it's it's quite um, uh, profound. You know that that you don't have energy heal uh, healing um, certifications behind you, or you haven't been studying this for years. It's like you just intuitively knew, and, and this is, I think, one of the gifts that starts to the blessings, I should say, that happen when you um, head down your your spiritual path. You never know how things are going to unfold, and what a beautiful experience you had. Let's let's talk about you. You talk a lot about using visualizations and your ability to stay focused, to bring in that which you desire. Um, As we talk about that, what would you say if there are children out there, young adults listening that are thinking to themselves, you know, there's uh, there's just no way I can do X, Y, or Z. I, I don't have enough money. I come from a broken home. You know, perhaps some of the challenges that life throws our way or the limitations that we create for ourselves. What would you say to them? I mean, was your background perfect that that allowed you to get to where you were? What, what do you say to them? Um, well, if you speak like if you speak like that, where you say I come from nothing, I come from this, I come from, then you will get what you you get what you give. The idea is being grateful that you're alive. Simplifying everything, you're alive right now, and you've got your own eyesight to perceive things on a more simplistic level, instead of being angry that it's raining, be glad that the water is coming down for the earth to grow so that you have oxygen to breathe. Start simplifying things. Start realizing earth is like one of the great, it's got to be the greatest place ever. And if you truly want something, everybody constantly hears motivational speakers and authors and the rags to riches stories. But this, this isn't just like, This isn't just uh, something that you shouldn't listen to. This is absolute truth. When you visualize things that you truly want, you will get them. And the flip side is positive or negative. It's very easy Mm -hmm. to focus on negative. Mm -hmm. And it's very Mm -hmm. easy to fall victim. That's the practice. Is once you start being grateful for things and you start breathing in pure love, you will receive an abundance of it. It may not happen the way you want it to. For instance, I was, I had this meeting with this quantum physicist who told me the story about manifestations. He said, this, this guy asked God, he said, God, I want a beautiful flower and I want a butterfly brought into my life. The next day on his porch showed up a cactus and a bug. And the guy started crying. He said, God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you, why have you brought me this? And God told him, just trust. And the next day, a flower sprouted from that cactus, and a butterfly landed on it. So the things that you want may not come in the way that you want, but they will definitely come to you in the way that you need it. And if you just open your eyes and are aware of it and are grateful for it, there is nothing you cannot achieve. I love that. And I love that uh, analogy that you just gave. That was, I love that. That's yeah, really I cool. Do. I love that. Um, when I first thought of it, I thought, well, what's not beautiful about a cactus? Like a cactus <laughs> is great. But then as the story unfolded, he got his beautiful butterfly out of the cactus. Yeah. So if he was just open to what he was about to receive. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times we create limitations for ourselves, too, in the how we we think something has to happen. No, it has to happen this way. And once we, you know, kind of um, detach from how something has to happen, then it's amazing 
what really does happen, I say. Um, but without what, you know, a lot of people, Brian, would, would look at you and say, well, you know, you have it all. You're young, you're, you're a great athlete, good looking, you know, wealthy, um, great physique, whatever. This guy has it all. You know, um, his life must be perfect. Is that true? I mean, when you have all these things, do all of life's challenges just somehow fade away into a beautiful state of perfection? Well, if you are living in a world of happiness and gratitude, an ample amount of money is not going to change that. Likewise, Mm -hmm. if you are living in anger, despair, frustration, Money will only amplify that. Mm. Money is not going to be the answer to your problems. You may think it is. You may think, oh my gosh, I'm in debt right now. Money will pull me out of this and then I'll be happy. I can promise you you won't because you will continue to find things that will make you unhappy. Until Mm. you are grateful for the money that you have right now, getting a dime after that may not happen. And why mm-hmm. does money have to be happiness? Before money was around, we all lived in villages in the woods. <laughs> well, we, right. We, we, and I know, always say we, we, we were fed from the earth. Yeah, and I always say that we're the only species on earth that pays to live here. Ah, right. <laughs> that's a good one, Mark. <laughs> but, well, I, I think that that's absolutely correct. But most people don't see it as that. They think, oh, when I have X, Y, and Z, whatever X, Y, and Z may be, that's when I'll be happy. That's when I'll be happy. Everybody is searching for happiness, but happiness is moment to moment. Joy is a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And if you ask anybody in the world, wouldn't you like to feel constant love and joy? Whether they say no or not, you know full well the answer is absolutely yes. So don't put a label on what joy is. Joy isn't a vacation. Joy isn't money. Joy isn't a nice car. It's not a nice job. Joy is just simply pure, high-frequency, high-vibrating love. That's what joy is, to constantly wake up and just feel alive and feel good, not needing a substance to feel good, not needing a car ride to feel good, although these things can create happiness, sure, but joy is the ultimate thing that we strive for, and we label what's going to make us happy because we don't have those things. Mm -hmm. But what we're not grateful for having, we will never have. Yeah, and, you know, Brian, it's, um, it's beautiful to hear you say that. It's, you know, a lot of times it really works uh, as a partnership. So if you're saying, give me, give me, give me, or I want, I want, I want, the universe is going to do exactly, you know, exactly what you're doing. So, you know, we talked earlier about gratitude and living in the present for what you have and the blessings that you have, whether, you know, it's, it's money or a roof over your head. They have found that some of the most happiest people on the face of this earth are people that live very, very simple lives and don't have a lot of stuff. Cause at the end of the day, the more stuff you have, the more it ends up owning you and it creates those, you know, um, those feelings of being in debt and, and I don't ever have enough money. Um, I have to say, Brian, just, you know, having you on the show today, I, I think you're going to be a great ambassador for spirit. I, and I think Kim would agree that you are on a journey to really inspire people, uh, not only from your background of being a, a world champion in, in major league baseball, but I think you could really communicate and connect with people that will, uh, look up to you. And I think you're going to be a great ambassador for spirit and in the path that is unfolding before you. I really do. Thank you. Kim, I mean, I was at a point in my life where I was down to no money and I couldn't afford to play baseball and I was going to quit. I've been pretty broken at times too, but my thought process at that time was, this is my dream. I will live in my car, which I did. I lived in my truck and I ate at the field, I ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and Doritos which wasn't the healthiest, but I was grateful for it. So it gave me nourishment. And I told myself, you either give it a hundred percent mentally, physically, and spiritually right now, 
or you will never make it. And if you don't make it, you tried, mm-hmm. and then you do something else to keep yourself alive. And it's fully submersing yourself into the ocean, which is a very big leap of faith. But in order to achieve anything, you have to put both feet in. You can't just test the water. Mm-hmm. You have to trust that God will provide for you. Yeah. And that's the key word, trust. And that's my mentors have taught me from that from the very beginning, whether you're psychic, whether you're healing, whether you're, you know, pitching your last pitch in the in the World Series is to trust. Because without trust, where you are and where you want to be to make that leap of faith, it all starts with trust. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Brian, for being so honest with us today Mm -hmm. about, you know, your experiences and just sharing some of your own wisdom with our community of all the things that you've learned on your spiritual path. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And I'm looking forward to seeing where Brian's going to go moving forward in the the world of metaphysics and spirituality and – I'm excited to uh, see what he's going to be able to do to inspire people, to help people, because that's what it really is all about, working for spirit, is helping, being in service to others, and healing. There is there is no better feeling, like you talked earlier, of working with somebody and helping them to heal from maybe a loss of a loved one, uh, their pet. I know that you had your own injury of the Tommy John surgery, which is a very, you know, can be a career-ending injury for a lot of people. So I know that you've had your own journey, uh, but we just wanted to thank you again, Brian, for being on Inspired Living with Mark and Kim, and we hopefully have you back uh, later in 2016 or early in 2017. Um, for next week's show, we're going to have special guest Belinda Womack. She's going to be talking about lessons from the 12 Archangels. So join us next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, here on Inspired Living with Mark and Kim on Home Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. Have a great week, everybody. Have Namaste. a great week. Namaste.